What's going on YouTube? My name is FG3000. I'm back in the place to be and welcome to Princess Connect Redive. This is a brand new hero collector that just hit soft launch last night. So before we jump into any gameplay, let's address all the questions that I'm sure are going to arise because I know a lot of people out there just like me were anticipating this release to hit like early in 2021. Imagine all of our surprise when the game came out last night, right? So let's answer a few questions before we jump into gameplay. So here we are at as of yesterday, the game is now in soft launch. So for those players lucky enough to join the world of Princess Connect Redive in advance of its full release, we hope you enjoy it. So let's stop right there for a second. So in order to play the game right now, all you need is the APK. You do not need a VPN whatsoever. Once you have the APK, you install it on your phone or on your emulator, you're in, you can play the game. Which of course leads to the very next question, FG. If I play in the soft launch, will I lose all of my progress when once the game hits full release, no, you will not. All of your progress, all of the jewels, any money that you spent will transfer over to full release. So for all intents and purposes right now, the game is live. You're not gonna lose any progress. You might as well start playing today. But let me answer the follow-up question. So number one, how do I play on emulator, FG? You're gonna need a 64-bit client emulator. So either Bluestack 64 or LD Player 64. I'll have a link down in the description below this video. Number two, FG, what if this is the SEA server and then when full launch hits, that's the actual global launch server? Maybe, I mean, that's always a possibility, but based on what I've read on Reddit, on Discord, the comment section, all over the internet, I did my research. There is no functionality in our version or in the Japanese version that allows you to switch servers. So there's only one server in JP. People anticipate there's only gonna be one server in global launch, which means if you start today and your friend starts a month from now in the full release, I think it's probably gonna be in about a month, you're all gonna be on the same exact server. Which leads to the very next question, what about PVP, FG? Well, this game has a very similar system to Marvel Strike Force. If you've never played that game before, it's a shard-based PVP system. So people that are in separate shards do not PVP against each other. So for right now, if you play the game right now today, you're probably gonna be in shard one. And then once shard one fills up, they're gonna open up shard two, and then all new players are gonna be in shard two. And people in shard one and in shard two do not PVP against each other. So if you kind of fast forward, let's say when the game finally full releases, it, it's up to like shard 14. Well, you're never gonna have to fight me because I'm gonna be in shard one and you're gonna be in shard 14, only fighting people within shard 14. Now, when it comes to guild PVP, however, that's wide open. So if you make a guild day one on full release, you will be fighting against people that made guilds in soft launch, but for me, I really don't care too much. When it comes to guild PVP, it's pretty much a whales game, even more than regular PVP. When it comes to guild PVP, you gotta you gotta fight against whales that have all banded together in a big old whale battalion. Like it's it's almost impossible to really competitively compete in guild PVP. So I wouldn't concern yourself too much about that. But those are the facts based on what I know today. If I got anything wrong, definitely check out Reddit, check out Discord, check out the comments below this video, check me out on Twitch. We'll talk about it live and we'll answer questions that maybe I got wrong, right? So, with all that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's start this video off as we always do, starting off with the heroes that you can collect. Now, of course, this is a waifu collector based on the anime, so fans of the anime, it's only one season, like 12 episodes, so fans of the anime, you're definitely gonna find all of your favorite characters here represented in chibi form. Luckily, I've been playing Illusion Connect, so I'm not as harsh on chibi models as I used to be, but I do know some people, that's gonna be a deal breaker for them but you know i would say they, they, they're okay good diversity good detail and as they power up they do get slightly more intricate looks nothing too crazy as you can see here it's only a two star and then from three to five star and that's pretty much it um so you can set your battle sprite you can set your your victory poses you can also change your icons as well as your little splash screens for your home screen as well so you know overall it just really depends on how much you like chibi models and how big of a fan of the anime you are if you're going to enjoy collecting the heroes in this game but i will say this this game does have a lot of collaborations as well so if you don't like what you see today maybe this is one of those games that you play just for the collaborations because right now i feel like some of the games that have the best collaborations are pretty subpar so it'd be nice to have you know a high quality game like this brought to you by side games that is a nice destination for some of our favorite collaborations so keep that in mind for the future so let's go ahead and jump into combat as you guys can see v 
very straightforward when it comes to hero collectors. You're gonna go from node to node to node, three star in each one. Good job, FG, man, I'm trying. Picorin is a terrible tank. Um, so that's normal. You also have hard mode as well. Very old school, and the old school vibes are gonna continue to go throughout this game. I'll tell you about that as we go through it, but very old school when it comes to hard mode. This is gonna be where you can farm for shards as well. So three attempts per day, find your favorite waifu, farm their shards, and get them powered up. So this is gonna be a stamina-based hero collector. No weird or arbitrary three-star requirements, just win and don't die. Now the game does have skip tickets, and in my opinion, you guys know I absolutely despise skip tickets. We'll talk about those when we get to the upgrade equipment portion of the video. Um, so just keep that in the back of your mind. But here is combat. And like I said, this game has a very like old school vibe, but updated. Like it went back in time to the like old school hero collectors that used to come out back in like 2017, where you just have characters that do basic attacks, special skills, and then when their blue bar fills up, they do an ultimate. That is it. That is the extent of combat. It is very hands-off. Maybe there are situations where, you know, you want to time a heal or you want to time a stun on a boss or something like that. But for the most part, it's all auto, all times to speed, all the time. So that is it. That is combat, and it's definitely what I would consider to be the weakest part of the game. Now, the strongest quality of the game is going to be, obviously, it's brought to you by side games, the presentation, the production value, the story. The story is going to be a massive draw of this game, fully voice acted, well translated. I've been reading every single bit of dialogue here, and nothing is wonky. Nothing is like Google Translator or anything like that. So quality translation, fully voice acted story. You're going to like that. So if you're a fan of the anime or if you just want to learn more about the anime, the characters, the side adventures, things of that nature, this game has it and it has it in droves. This is probably the most story intense game that I played on a hero collector in a very, very long time. So fans of story, you're not going to have a problem. Should I say story one more time? Lots of story in this game. And no censorship so far. It looks good. So outside of the main story quest, here are all of your gameplay modes. You have the Grotto here, which is going to be your tried and true daily resource grinds, whether you're trying to grab EXP or mana quests. Um, you are going to have to do these every single day. Luckily for the game, it does have skip tickets. But unluckily for all of us, the game has skip tickets. Now, I've only been playing the game a day. I do have the daily pack, which gives you more skip tickets every single day. And I've already run out of skip tickets. And it's kind of an issue because a lot of these stages, you are gonna have to skip multiple times to get the gear drops that you need. And I, I do not look forward to having to manually repeat stages because in this game, there is no auto repeat functionality whatsoever. So if you're out of skip tickets and you're trying to get a piece of gear to drop and it just won't drop, you're gonna be sitting at your phone, you're gonna be sitting at your computer, hitting repeat stage, repeat stage, repeat stage over and over and over again because you're gonna be out of skip tickets. Now, luckily, skip tickets do drop everywhere, but I still feel like it's a problem. The next gameplay mode is called Dungeon, which is basically a survival tower. So you're gonna go all the way up this tower, completing every single floor here, getting rewards, but if someone dies, they're dead. And as you lose HP, you only get a little bit of HP back every single time you win. So you definitely wanna min-max your team, bring healers, and you might even play this game a little bit more manually than other gameplay modes, but I, I doubt it. But hey, I could be wrong. In the future, we're gonna have a gameplay mode called Sanctum Survey and Clan Battle, which we talked about a little bit earlier. Um, arena PvP is very straightforward. And then Princess Arena, I would think is just an expanded version of Battle Arena PvP. And that is all of the gameplay modes that are currently in the game. So. Tons of story, main story, character story, guild story, extra stories, and then you have your main story quest, your daily resource grinds, a survival tower, PvP, and then whatever these two gameplay modes are in the future, clan battle, I know. Um, outside of that, there's also a guild house that you can decorate, so here where all your waifus are gonna hang out and chill. Over time, your home is also gonna generate upgrade materials for your account as well, such as sweet tickets, mana, things of that nature. You can also buy furniture for your guild as well. I've already bought a few things here using in-game currency, which I always appreciate. So decorate to your heart's content. Um, some of the furniture here also has effects. So if you take Karin's table over here, if we go on over to her table, you can also upgrade it to make it more effective. And it also changes the aesthetic of the table as well. You love to see it. 
And then last but not least, there are clans in the game as well, 30 members deep. And then of course there is clan PVP, which we've already talked about a little bit earlier. So that is the game, ladies and gentlemen. You definitely have that side games polished throughout, you know, decent quality of life, good production values, good presentation. Um, players that are gonna enjoy this game are definitely gonna be players that enjoy lots and lots of story in their hero collectors. So if that's you and you don't really mind the kind of ho-hum and kind of throwaway combat, this is definitely the game for you. And of course, if you're a fan of the anime, what are you waiting for? Download the game today. So with that being said, let's finish the video off as we always do, doing a nice little summon session. So there's only one premium gacha banner in the game right now. As you guys can see, the game does differentiate between free currency and premium currency. But for right now, based on only what's in the game, the only way that you can use premium currency different than free currency is being able to do a single summon every single day for 50 premium. I, I don't see anything else in the game that, that could change. I don't know, um, but that's what's in the game right now. Um, drawing 10 will cost you 1,500 jewels. So let's go ahead and do a nice full summon session. Here comes Karin, and she does not have a rainbow paper in her hand. I already know how to how to see rainbows in this game. You'll be able to actually see it in her in her her papers here. So we'll go through, as you get duplicates, you're gonna get these divine amulets, and I'll show you what those are used for. Um, if you play Guardian Tales, you pretty much know exactly what these are kind of used for. These allow you to um, buy shards for other characters, right? So even as you're getting duplicates, you will be able to power up your favorite characters, even if you're not pulling them. And then, uh, great. <laughs> so, so that's gonna be my little summon there. And like I said, um, you are gonna get these divine amulets that you can then turn around, go inside the shop, go into the Divine Amulet tab, and then here you can say, you know what, I really want my Picorin to actually be a good tank, so I can go in here and I can buy her shards, or you can just farm for her in the hard stages, completely up to ya. So that will do it, ladies and gentlemen. A nice little look at Princess Connect Redive. Kind of came out of nowhere for me. Let's talk about the game a little bit more, and let's do some more summons, ladies and gentlemen. We might go a little bit deep. I don't wanna go too crazy, just in case I get screwed over with the server thing, but we, we, we might go a little bit deep right now live on twitch.tv slash FG3000. Come on down to Twitch, let's talk more about the game. Let me know because I know there was a lot of hype surrounding this game. Are you satisfied? Meet me on twitch.tv slash FG3000. See you there right now. Come on, let's go. Dude, I forgot to talk about the upgrade process. All right, real quick. So like I said earlier, the game definitely has some old school roots throughout a lot of this game's mechanics, especially when it comes to the gear upgrade system. So this is not gonna be one of those games where you're gonna have to manage inventory and stats and percentages and things of that nature, having to move gear from this character to that character. You're not gonna have to do that at all. This is gonna be like those hero collectors that we used to play back in 2017, where all of your gear and your gear slots are already already predetermined. So all of this gear right here, I have no choice whatsoever. I have no tangible input when it comes to collecting this gear. All I can do here is say, all right, I need to get that sword right here. Okay, click this stat here, go to how to obtain. It'll tell me exactly where it drops. I'll use a couple of skip tickets here in order to get the last piece. I got it, overshot it a little bit, no big deal. Go right back to my character, um, hit optimize, which is a great feature I'll tell you about here in a second. That'll put the gear there, and then from that point, just like in all old school hero collectors used to do, you rank up, all of that gear gets absorbed into your character, you move from rank three to rank four, and you do the whole process all over again, and it looks like I just learned a brand new skill, you love to see it. And that's it, that is the gear system. So I know a lot of people are either gonna love this system or hate it. It really depends on what other games you're playing. Um, yes, it doesn't give you any type of flexibility when it comes to the characters. All the characters are basically predetermined. It's either you have gear or you don't have gear. Like I said, some people are gonna hate this system, but I know some people might enjoy it. Like if you're playing Genshin Impact or Epic Seven and you're tired of playing inventory Tetris, you ain't gotta worry about that here. So, so that is the equipment and inventory system there. Um, you can also level up your character by using EXP juice, very straightforward. Um, you also upgrade your skills based on your current level. So I can upgrade my, you know, my little falling slash here all the way up to level 25, or I can hit the optimize button 
and it automatically maxes it out for me. This optimize button is fantastic. And then of course, what we talked about a little bit earlier, as you get shards for characters, this will allow you to start up your individual units. So very, very straightforward. Um, the last thing you need to know about equipment is that you can refine it as well. So if we take this staff right here, I can use you know old gear as fodder, or I can use these little specialty crystals as well to refine the gear, max it out based on the star level, rinse and repeat on. Um, once you absorb this gear, into your character as they go from rank four to rank five you get i'm not sure if it's all of it don't fact check me on it just respect me on it um you do get some of that currency back that you use to refine each individual gear so now i'm done once again my name is fg3000 i thank you a ton for watching still come to twitch and i'll see you next video twitch.tv fg3000 that's me